Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey. Over my 25 years of writing code and 10 years of making games, I've developed a really nice ability. The ability and confidence to be able to build any game that I can imagine. I've made action games, I've made management games and strategy games, I've made automation games, racing games, platformers, I've even made casual games, I've made top-down shooters, made a turn-based strategy game, a tower defense game, I've made first-person shooters, a battle sandbox game, park simulation game, logistics management game, a co-op game, and tons more mini games and prototypes. Building all of this has really granted me the confidence and the ability that I am capable of building any game that I can imagine. This is a really nice ability to have, and I'm sure a lot of you would like to have this as well. Basically my goal with this channel, with the tons of tutorials that I've done, with all of the courses that I've created, the goal with all of this is really for me to pass on this ability onto you so you can make any game you can imagine. However, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying this to brag, quite the opposite actually. It did not used to be like this for me. In fact, for my very first team game, what eventually became Survivor Squad, this is a top-down strategy zombie game. So you recruit a bunch of survivors, gather force supplies and weapons, move around as a squad and survive all these zombies. However, the initial idea was not a zombie game. One of my favorite games as a kid was SWAT. I played a ton of SWAT 2 and SWAT 3. I really love these games. I love the idea of scouting a building from the outside, getting all the squad members up against the door, doing a breach and taking down all the bad guys in a really satisfying manner. So when I was thinking of ideas for what to do for my first team game, this is the idea that came to mind right away. That was the plan, that's what I wanted to do. I basically wanted to make a top-down SWAT game. However, back then I was much less experienced than I am nowadays. This was 12 years ago, all the way back in 2012. As I was trying to make this idea come to life, as I was trying to write all of the AI logic to control all of the units, getting them all to stack up against the door and all do some basic common logic, doing all of that while also having the enemies react intelligently to the SWAT units. I was really trying to build all of that, but it was a really very frustrating experience. My code was a complete mess and all that logic just did not work together. So after trying for a really, really long time, I eventually had to face the reality that I wasn't yet skilled enough to bring that vision to life. I tried my hardest, but I just couldn't build it. So at that point, I decided to give up on the idea of making a SWAT game, which would involve some very complex AI. And instead, I changed it to be a game all about zombies. Zombies are really dumb, so there's really not much AI required. They really just move towards the target and attack, that's it. With my skills at the time, I was capable of doing that kind of dumb zombie AI. And for the same reason, I also scrapped the idea of having the units all bunch up together and do some complex breaching logic. Again, I really couldn't make that happen. So I made the units just manually controlled by the player, so the player has to manually control each one individually. That was my reality back then. I wish I was able to bring the original vision to life, but back then I did not have the skills that I have today. I did not have the ability to bring any game I can imagine to life. Whereas nowadays, after 12 years of building tons of games and writing tons and tons of lines of code, nowadays I am confident I have that ability. Nowadays I am confident that if I went back to that original idea, with all the logic of doing the AI breaching, with all of the AI for the enemies and all that, nowadays I am confident that I could build it exactly as I envisioned it 12 years ago. So basically here on this channel, I imagine some of you are myself from that time ago, and I want to help pass on this ability onto you so you can build any game you can imagine. And also hopefully I can pass on this ability onto you without taking as long as it took me. Nowadays for making a game, my main limitation isn't lack of ability, but rather just time. Some of my favorite games growing up were also Age of Empires, Red Alert, Empire Earth, and later on Generals and Company of Heroes. I would absolutely love to do some kind of RTS someday. Then there are tons of really interesting simulator games on Steam. This is also a genre that I'd love to tackle someday. Or actually one that I've had on my two playlists for ages but still haven't gotten around to. Something like Stardew Valley. I haven't played it just because I know that as soon as I touch it I'm going to be obsessed with the game and I'm going to play non-stop for about 100 hours. And whilst I'm playing I'm also going to be thinking about all kinds of videos, all kinds of systems that I'd love to remake from this game. Another favorite game of mine while growing up was The Sims. Back then I played it kind of like an RPG. My goal was always to start with The Sim with no money and then pick a random career and work on the way to the top. I remember how keeping a certain number of friends for getting each promotion, that was a really tricky part. Making a life simulation game like this one sounds like a lot of fun. There's also a bunch of building, crafting, combat games on Steam, kind of like Valheim. I'd also love to build one of these games someday. Or another one that I also loved was Max Payne. I'd love to build some kind of third-person shooter with some really awesome bullet time mechanics. Out of all of those, I am confident that I do have the ability to bring any of these to life. Now obviously when I'm saying that I am keeping in mind scope. For example, a game like The Sims 4. This one has a monumental scope. There's literally tens of thousands of objects and interactions. The game has almost a thousand bucks worth of DLC. So yeah, obviously it's not possible for me or any experienced developer, any solo developer to build a game on this scale, but something with a much smaller scope, like the first Sims, something that just focuses on the core game mechanics. Yeah, that one I'm pretty confident that I could build. But at the same time, also another point, there's a big difference between being able to technically make some kind of game and making an excellent game. Games are a combination of art and technology, so it's not just tech. This is why the discipline of game design, that one is more of an art as opposed to a science. 
So whilst I could technically build all these games, I'm not sure I could get the excellent game design behind them. But just being able to build something technically, that is a pretty awesome ability. And if you want to also develop this ability, the ability of being able to take any game idea you have in your mind and bring it to life, if so, then really my best advice is just build tons of things. Make lots of games and write tons and tons of code. Like I said in my story about my Survivor Squad game, what changed in the 12 years since I made that game? What changed was really just the amount of games that I've made, the amount of code that I've written. Since that time, I've written literally hundreds of thousands of lines of code. And through all that time and all that experience, that is how I was able to acquire this really awesome ability. Experience truly is a very magical thing. The more games you make, the more code you write, the more capable you become until you reach a point where you can build literally anything you can imagine. So the answer to attaining this ability is really just experience. If you are a beginner, then I highly recommend remaking some super simple games. My favorite simple game is just Flappy Bird. It is super simple, a very basic design, but still teaches you quite a lot. Pong is also a simple one and also involves some basic AI. Then for one level above that, you can make some like Pac-Man or Space Invaders. Those involve a little bit more logic or perhaps some quote-unquote original simple games. You can make some like a super simple platformer, literally just a character with gravity jumping over blocks, that's it. Or make a super simple racing game, kind of like my own game that I showed, where it really just goes left to right and dodges cars. Or you can make a simple top-down shooter with zombies, something super basic with extremely simple AI. Basically, the answer to attaining this ability is experience. The more games you make, the more code you write, the more capable you become. You basically just have to make a dozen crappy games before you can make something good. So just get those done very quickly in order to gain a ton of experience. If you're looking for a guide path, you can check out some of the courses where I made some of the games that I mentioned. You can see how I built a tower defense game from scratch, or how I made this really awesome turn-based strategy game, kind of like XCOM. This is a really awesome intermediate course. Or how I made a co-op game in my free Kitchen Chaos course and the follow-up multiplayer one. Or in general, check out my recently released C-Sharp course. This one is focused on the language itself which is more general, so it allows you to gain knowledge to be able to build any game or really write any code that you can think of. I include my 10 years of C-sharp knowledge in this course. It features over 50 video lectures, each covering different topics, starting from the absolute basics to some more complex stuff. And the course also importantly includes a companion project. This one includes questions, quizzes, and very importantly, it includes over 100 interactive exercises. These are exercises that require you to actually write code in order to complete the exercise. I designed them specifically to help you learn by doing, in order to ensure you really truly learn the contents of each lecture. Either way, regardless of what path you choose, I wish you the best of luck in your learning journey, and I hope that one day you too can have the confidence and the ability to be able to build any game you can imagine.